Hello and welcome back to my channel for another video. I hope you're well, I hope you're comfortable. You might wanna go and grab yourself a cup of tea or something before you sit down to watch this video because today I'm going to be going through what I would like to add to my wardrobe and it's a lot. In my last video, I went through everything that is currently in my wardrobe and I tried a lot of it on. So if that sounds interesting to you, then definitely go back and watch that one as well. For a bit of context around why I find myself in this predicament of having to rebuild most of my wardrobe from the ground up, I recently moved overseas. So I was previously living in Sydney, Australia, and then I moved to Boston in the United States. And partly those two places have very different climates. So as we head into winter, I have never owned some of the kinds of clothes that I need in this sort of climate. But also because I traveled over the summer before ending up in Boston, it was actually nearly three months between leaving Australia and arriving in Boston. So I only brought one suitcase with me. My wardrobe back in Sydney was much bigger, much more comprehensive. Probably there was a lot of stuff I didn't really need. And when we moved, I ended up giving lots of things away donating them to charity but also leaving a lot of the stuff that I did want to keep at my parents house. So what I'm left with now is a wardrobe that I packed in a suitcase for the purpose of traveling in Europe over the summer and now it's cold in Boston and I don't have any clothes to wear. I've bought a handful of things recently like a winter coat and some rain boots but I still really feel like I don't have much to wear. And I also want to be really considered and intentional in what I do add to my wardrobe this time. I have fallen into the trap of making impulse purchases or buying things that don't work for me or with the other things that I have in my wardrobe so, so many times before. And I don't want to do that this time. So I guess the purpose of this video is I'm trying to be really thoughtful about the kinds of things that I will add to my wardrobe over the coming seasons. So first, let's have a look at tops. I have a few t-shirts in my wardrobe, but I'm feeling really over that style at the moment. And I don't like how the sleeve kind of cuts off and creates a line under my jumper. I've been loving those knitted long sleeve tops recently, especially the ones that have like a sweetheart neckline or a curvy kind of neckline. I think it's a gorgeous, slightly sexy shape, especially if you've got a bit more up top like me. A few examples that I'm looking at at the moment are like these ones from Aritzia, Abercrombie do really nice ones as well, and H&M have some cheaper options. Rouge and Reformation both have really lovely options at the higher end as well. I would style these with jeans for an effortless yet put together kind of look, and then also with something like a slip skirt for that contrast between the shiny satin and the knitted jumper for a sexier evening kind of look. I also really like these seamed base layer style tops. I first saw them on Anna Newton from the Anna Edit, who got hers from a brand called Base Range. These ones are really, really nice and you can find them on net a -Porte, but they're a bit spinny. So something similar that I have my eyes on are these lovely ones from Dish. I think it must be something about how the fabric is cut on these garments because they just hug your curves and look really, really nice. I would also wear these with jeans or a slip skirt for the same effortless yet put together kind of look, but I think they would also work really well with a pair of tailored trousers for a more corporate look. Speaking of tops that are cut to hug you in all the right places, I'm obsessed with these Skims Henley tops. These would just be for lounging around the house, but I think they would look great with leggings and a pair of Ugg boots. I'm a big believer in spending where you get your cost per wear. And when I'm spending a lot of time at home, I want to be comfortable. So jeans are kind of out, but I also want to be wearing something that I could wear out of the house if I need to run to the supermarket or if I want to go out for a walk. So I think these tops with leggings would look great. And then I would just chuck on a big jumper or maybe a coat and change out Uggs for proper boots. And that's a look. Speaking of big jumpers, I would love to have a few more options for knitwear. I have a couple of mid-brown beige knits, but I think I would like a lighter cream colored one like this cashmere one from Uniqlo honestly I could have that in every color or maybe a chunky Aran sweater like these ones which I just think would look so cozy with jeans or tucked into a slip skirt I think I would also like some knitwear in navy I tend to wear a lot of black and I think that navy is a great way to break that up but it still feels just as easy to style as black and then I would love an oversized striped knit like the totem one that everyone seems to have but obviously totem is never within budget but there are several dupes from places like H&M and Gap that look really good that that sounds like a lot of jumpers, but in my mind, it's actually only about six jumpers, including the ones I already have. Let us move on to pants now. And for any Brits watching, yes, I do mean trousers. I am a jeans girl through and through. I love wearing jeans. I love how they make my body look. And before the pandemic, I was the kind of person who wore jeans to chill at home. I know it feels ridiculous now. They had a bit of stretch in them and I genuinely used to find them comfortable. Then during the pandemic, all of my jeans got too small for me and I started wearing just the Lululemon Align leggings constantly. And since then, I haven't fully replaced my jeans collection because obviously nice jeans cost money and I do think it's worth having nice jeans. And this whole time, I don't feel like my weight has been stable enough 
enough for me to work out what size I need now. So I currently have two pairs of skinny jeans, one in a dark blue and one in a black, and I don't like wearing either of them. I don't enjoy the skinny jean style anymore. And I don't think these jeans fit me particularly well, but they do fit. So I've been wearing them mostly. And then I have one pair of jeans that I really need to get rid of because they're way too big for me. I could kind of wear them around the house, but I just don't reach for them. And then I have two pairs of the Levi's ribcage jeans, one in a mid blue color and one in a light blue color, but neither of them quite fit me right now. And if they don't fit me in the next few months, I'm gonna have to get rid of them. So I have no jeans that I like and fit that I can wear. But I think overall my wardrobe wants four pairs of really great jeans. So I think the first pair would have to be black straight leg jeans. I like a high rise jean. Sometimes I can wear a mid rise jean because I'm kind of short and the mid rise is basically high rise on me. And I do not foresee myself ever returning to the low rise jeans look. I did that in middle school and my bum was out half the time and I'm still emotionally traumatized from that experience. So I think a mid rise is always going to be the most classic and timeless denim look if you look back at denim through the decades. But a high rise is a bit of me. And black for jeans is an essential color for me because I often find that it works better in an outfit than blue jeans. So number one, a pair of black straight leg jeans. For pair number two, I would like a pair of white straight leg jeans. And I think these ones would look the most dressed up and put together. And depending on the vibe, I would totally wear these ones to work. I would just probably avoid having a saucy lunch that day. But I think a pair of white jeans paired with a dark silk blouse and a pair of heels or heeled boots is a really chic look. And third, I would love a pair of black leather trousers. It's really hard to find these because it's such a specific fit person to person, but I think they look really cool. When I first saw these jeans on an influencer, it made me think of these really early photos of the Beatles from before they were like famous famous and they were just locally famous. It's a little bit rock and roll, a little bit beatnik, a little bit retro. I think they're cool and the smoothness of the leather lets you play with texture like how divine against a textured wool coat or a jumper. Abercrombie have a few options like these ones and then Aritzia have a good pair as well. And then just a pair of classic blue jeans. I have two pairs, one in a lighter wash and one in a mid wash. And if they don't fit me soon, then that will also go on my list of things I need to add to my wardrobe. And both of those pairs that I have are the Levi's ribcage jean and I have them in a size 32. But I find that the lighter wash is tighter and more rigid than the mid and dark washes. Just if you're thinking about them for yourself. All right, let's do skirts now. So this time of year is not the best time for skirts. So realistically, I won't be looking to add much until spring, by which time I am sure I will do another one of these videos if you guys like it. But a few of the skirts I would love to have in my wardrobe are these. Firstly, an A-line leather mini skirt. I was gifted a perfect skirt like this shortly before I left Australia, but unfortunately it didn't make the cut and now it is living its best life in someone else's wardrobe. So I would love a skirt like this and I'm just imagining it paired with sheer tights and a pair of Chelsea boots and then maybe even some tall boots and a long coat over the top just playing with those different lengths in the outfit and just like the leather trousers I think the smoothness of the leather just plays so well with knitted and woolen fabrics so I would definitely be pairing it with knitwear and that is I think a perfect autumn winter kind of outfit depending on how cold it is. Next and this one is definitely not a need kind of skirt but another black a-line mini skirt that's not leather I think would actually be really handy. I think this one from Jerf Avenue is what made this style of skirt go viral recently. The look at the moment with this skirt is to have that little slit in the side, which I think is really cute and it looks great, but that is exactly what will date a skirt like this. And in five years time, we'll look back at that skirt and go, oh, that's that Jerf Avenue skirt that literally everyone wore in 2022. And I think people should wear absolutely whatever they want. So I'm not at all saying that that would be a reason not to wear it in the future. But in my experience, it can be details like that that I get sick of over time. So if I could find one without the slit, I would probably go for that. And again, I would style this with sheer tights and boots and a big knit jumper. And finally, another skirt I would like is simply an upgrade to the black slip skirt that I already have. This one was quite cheap and that's reflected in the fabric, which is not very nice, but I really love the style of this skirt. And so when it's possible, I would probably upgrade that to a nicer version. There are several really good options out there at lots of different price points. Like this one that I got from Nordstrom Rack was only $20. And then around the $100 mark, you can get ones like this from Aritzia. And then on the higher end, you can also get ones like this from Reformation. I think these look great with a cozy knitted jumper or a long sleeve slim fit top, like those ones from Dish that I mentioned before. And I think for a really chic styled up kind of look, I would wear it with a long coat and tall boots. But I also think these skirts are super versatile and you can wear them literally with a t-shirt and sneakers and they still look great. All right, so that is it for skirts. Next up is dresses. I am a dresses girl through and through. It is so easy to put on a dress and just instantly have an outfit ready to go. Especially in summer when I don't want to put a million things on my body, but I still want to look really nice for 
vacation photos or summer events. But just like skirts, through the cooler months, I probably won't add a lot of dresses to my wardrobe, but I do really, really love this one from Dish. It's one of those wear with everything and for every occasion kind of dresses because it's just a simple dress in a beautiful cut. And what I like most is that it would be appropriate for work, which means I could get wear out of it at the office and also on my own time. And you know, I am all about getting that cost per wear down. I'm imagining this with a pair of tall boots, a belt around the waist and a long camel coat over the top. So chic. And that is probably it for dresses for now. All of this cold weather talk has got me thinking about coats. I have lived in Sydney for the last four years and there was never really any need for a coat, so I don't own any, except the one I bought here. But this is what I think the perfect collection would look like for me. So firstly, I need to have the big puffy winter coat. And I did buy one of these recently from LL Bean, so I'm sort of set in this department. But LL Bean is more of a practical brand, so if I were looking for something that was like a little bit more style conscious, I would go for these ones from Aritzia. I have heard really, really good things about their super puff range and in particular I think I would go for this waterproof style over the water resistant style because it means you can wear it in the rain and also it's a little bit more windproof which keeps you warmer somewhere it's a bit gusty then for a much more polished look I would love a camel wrap coat like these ones the Max Mara Manuela cashmere coat is obviously the dream camel coat but that will never be within budget and even if it were there are so many great quality dupes on the market that I just wouldn't bother with the real deal I also think a black coat in a similar cut or maybe with buttons down the front would be a really versatile alternative to the camel coat. Sometimes I just feel like dressing dark and I think I would benefit from having that in my wardrobe. And then finally a trench coat for those in-between days and I love the longer styles that we've seen over the last few years. There was quite a long period where the knee length or even higher up like a thigh length trench coat was the predominant style but I feel that that looks a little bit dated now and I prefer the longer length trench coats because they look sort of vintage but in a vintage spy kind of way. Let's move on to shoes which is a big category for me right now because I could only bring a few pairs in my suitcase. I used to have a pair of brown croc print boots from Joe Mercer and I do still have them but they're in a box back home at my parents place. I have my fingers crossed that my mum will send them to me sometime soon. I'm really sad about how little I've worn these because I think I bought them towards the end of 2020 on a really incredible sale like less than half price and I think I bought them in the sales right at the end of winter and then of course in Sydney it wasn't cold enough to wear boots for like six months of the year like your feet will literally suffocate in this little leather prison and then as soon as the weather started getting cool enough for me to wear boots we were straight back into lockdown for another several months and now it's two years later and I've only worn them a handful of times and I don't even have them with me so I would love to have these back in my wardrobe and I actually think they're a really versatile style that breaks up an outfit a little bit Rouge have these really nice ones that come in the brown croc but also several other patterns the ones that I have have a more pointed toe but I think this style is really nice and kind of Frenchy chic and both the pair that I have and these ones have that ankle that kind of comes up a little bit further so you can wear them with like straight leg or wide leg jeans that come over the top of the top of the boot and I don't know it kind of looks cool next I am desperate for a pair of knee-high boots they have been absolutely everywhere the last few seasons and I am obsessed I would love to find a pair in a style that I really like that actually fit my calves so maybe I'll try on some different brands and let you know if they work for me or not I think knee-high boots are super cool and they pop back in and out of style constantly there's the 2010s Kate Middleton riding boot style there's the 90s chunky boot kind of style there's the 70s suede boot there's the 1960s go-go boot it's probably riding boots before that they're a classic another super on-trend shoe is the ballet flat and I go on and off these constantly because first of all they are so uncomfortable let us not forget the pain we put our feet through in the 2010s with ballet flats whoever suggested that ballet flats were a good shoe to like walk to the train catch the train walk to the office walk around the office all day and then do everything in reverse was absolutely kidding themselves ballet flats are so uncomfortable they provide no support for our feet and the way that they're cut often means that your poor little toes are gripping onto the bottom of the shoe and sometimes that's not comfortable. So I have had my eye on some ones from Everlane and J Crew. If you don't experience the same problems with ballet flats that I do, have a look at these ones because I think they look really nice, really chic. But honestly, if I were going to invest in a pair of shoes like this, I would probably rather spend my money on a nice pair of Mary Janes like these ones from Carrel. I have been in love with this Kina style for years and one day I will buy a pair. They come in a range of colors and then they also have a slightly lower heel in the Ariana style. The small heel combined with the straps over the top make them much more comfortable than a ballet flat with no chance of losing a shoe on an escalator coming out of the train station. And I also think they make more 
more of a statement than a ballet flat. They're not for everyone, but I do love a Mary Jane shoe and these ones are perfection. Let's talk about accessories. I had to separate shoes because there were a lot of them, but this section will be everything else. I have in my notes here that I need a belt, but since I wrote this video, I did actually buy a belt. I got this black one from H&M. It's real leather and it only set me back 15 or 20 dollars. For me, a belt really has to be real leather and whether you get that brand new or secondhand from somewhere, it doesn't matter. But the reason for that is if you get a plastic belt, they just get so much wear that they look frayed really quickly and then they don't look polished and you have to get a new one eventually and that's wasteful. Whereas with a leather belt, if it starts looking a little bit crusty or dry, you can just put a little bit of leather polish on it and it comes back good as new. And I think belts are essential for elevating a look sometimes. You don't always need a belt, but it can be great for cinching in the waist or elevating a pair of jeans. So I have this one in black with a silver look buckle, but I think I would also like one in tan with a gold or a brass buckle. I think I like brass as a look more than the gold look because the brass feels durable. It's a little bit more laid back. Depends on what you're wearing the belt for, I think. I would also love some gold hoop earrings that make a bit more of a statement than these ones. So I have these dainty little ones from Ana Luisa and they are gorgeous, but I think I would like another pair that's sort of bigger, chunkier and makes more of a statement. I think earrings can instantly elevate an outfit without being too much work. And the metal contrasts really nicely with knitwear and woolens that we tend to wear more in the cooler months. Now there are a few things that I need in Boston that I have never had in my wardrobe before, and they are a scarf, a beanie and a pair of gloves. I have a beanie and a pair of gloves that I won't show you because they were just kind of an emergency purchase but I do have a scarf this one that I bought in Scotland when I was there over the summer and it's my family's tartan so I love it this one is lamb's wool which is definitely warm enough um, it's just a bit itchier than something like cashmere would be there are some incredibly expensive cashmere scarves getting around but there are also some a little bit more affordable ones and I think cashmere is really nice in a scarf because it's not itchy on your neck and then likewise I would really love a nice beanie and pair of gloves that I enjoy wearing and I think a pair of leather gloves look really chic and can last you basically a lifetime. Cos have a pair of these really cute cashmere lined mittens that I'm obsessed with. And that's it. Thank you for sticking with me through all of that. I know it has been a lengthy video. I just think it's so fun planning my wardrobe. And especially now that I just have the bare bones, I have been dreaming about what will make my wardrobe work better, what it should look like and what works for me at this particular stage of my life. This huge list of items is by no means a shopping list and realistically, I will only add a handful of these items to my wardrobe this season. The rest I'll put on a wish list for the next time autumn rolls around and lots of these items will never end up in my wardrobe anyway, but that's just how it works. I don't think that the perfect wardrobe exists and that is okay. Our wardrobes are this living thing that evolves with us as we go through life, as our lifestyles change, as our bodies change, as our interests change. But in the end, I've always thought that that's half the fun of it anyway. So there it is. That's my very long list of things I would like to add to my wardrobe this season. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you back here for another one soon.